Welcome back to DWeb Decoded, your guide to navigating the decentralized web. I'm your host, Aaron Stanley, and today I talked to Alex Murin and Logan Lentz of Leto. Alex and Logan are IPFS veterans and have been catalytic in onboarding new developers into the ecosystem through their company. They also head up the popular Filecoin Orbit program for North America out of Austin, Texas. Let's get started. Alex, Logan, uh, it's really great to have you both here today. Yeah, thanks so much. This is, we've been talking about this for a while. Super excited to finally come, come on. Amazing. Um, well, let's get started with just a couple quick introductions. Uh, would love to just hear a bit about your professional background and really just how you got into Filecoin IPFS uh, in the first place and what that journey has been like. Um, maybe, uh, uh, Logan, let's start with you. Sure. So Alex and I have been in the ecosystem, like you said, for quite a while. Um, we got started doing just typical um, IPFS, moving NFTs around, getting our, our feet you know, wet into the ecosystem. And we've just continued over the past four or five years, um, pushing um, the software that we're building, pushing just our connection to the ecosystem, um, really just doing as much as we can to kind of push the, the efficiency and everything that makes sense in terms of Web3, trying to push that into the greater ecosystem as much as we can. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then, uh, Alex, what about you? Yeah, so as Logan mentioned, he and I have actually known each other for over 10 years. We went to high school together, um, and we both have software backgrounds, and um, we've been in the Bitcoin Web3 world for a long time, and we were really attracted to the mission of the Protocol Lab stack, you know, Filecoin, uh, IPFS, now the compute layers, um, the mission of building a more persistent, resilient uh, and user-owned internet really attracted us. And so we started out um, just participating in some hackathons, you know, doing some hack projects, and then uh, I guess uh, some small grants from IPFS and Filecoin. And, and then we um, are now sort of full-time on Lado, um, as you mentioned. And so, yeah, we're really um, huge proponents of the space. And what we really like to focus on, and um, we'll talk more about like the Austin Filecoin Orbit Group, but we really like to focus on like usability for anyone. So like Logan said, Web3 developers, but also Web2 developers. Like people need tools today to just use these types of awesome technologies in their stack. And so that's what we focus on at Lado. And then with the Orbit group, that's what we focus on. And um, yeah, so. Nice, very cool, very cool. I'd love to kind of dive into the the the, the theme of what you just touched on there, uh, of just how you initially became interested in, in Filecoin IPFS uh, and just kind of the mission. You, you, you resonate a lot with the mission. And I was hoping we could maybe like double click on that a little bit. And um, especially, you know, kind of going back you know, five, six years uh, in, in crypto history here, there was, you know, at that time, there was just like all sorts of other stuff that you could take interest in. Even today, there's all sorts of other things you could be interested in. Um, but would love to kind of nail down on um, like what made you guys say like, hey, like, you know, we're not going to be Bitcoin developers. We're not going to be Ethereum developers. Like we want to we want to work on like Filecoin IPFS or this, this particular ecosystem. What was what was kind of like the selling point there? Uh, Logan, you got your hand raised. Uh, what, right. You, you want to take that one? Sure. Yeah. So Alex and I, as we were seeing the ecosystem grow, um, everybody was I mean, we, we were especially following uh, cryptocurrencies and how you know, finance has really been turned upside down on its head. And so taking it a step further and in, in reading and seeing like, oh, here's Filecoin and here's IPFS and how this is how you kind of decentralize and kind of, there's a lot of like the internet, uh, Juan talks about it a lot. The internet's been built, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And ever since then, um, there's been so much advance in tooling and solutions. When they were building the internet 15 years ago, there was a lot of problems that they had to solve. And and so now we have a much, much greater breadth of, of tooling that will really like make the internet much, much more safe and, and easier to use for everyone. And so I think that was like by far the biggest reason why it was like, okay, we should probably go. It's just a matter of physics. I mean, makes sense. So. Yeah, yeah, Alex, do you have anything you want to add on that? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely echoing the same kind of thing. We um, both have like enterprise software experience. And so a lot of the problems we saw um, that traditional companies face, whether it's like, yeah, any, any type of like traditional you know, software company or even just companies that use software in their, in their daily business. Um, there's a lot of problems that this stack and the vision that Juan Bennett has put forward is solving. Some of it today, some of it tomorrow, some of it a few, few years down the line. And so 
we were like, okay, you know, if there's a place to be in, in the Web3 world, this is where the rubber is really hitting the road um, and really solving real world problems for companies. And so that's when we started hacking on and started building our own projects to say, hey, okay, how can we apply these, these sort of like um, fundamental mechanisms that have been built that are open source that anyone can just go build on and actually solve problems for people. And, um, and we started small and we're getting, you know, we're working bigger and bigger. And, you know, a lot of the ecosystem companies that, that exist today are um, really solving real world problems. And um, at the end of the day, that's what startups are all about. That's what, that's what business is all about. And so um, what more exciting thing to do than work on rebuilding how the web works? Yeah, absolutely. And, and and you guys touched on a couple of interesting points there around, you know, kind of kind of come from like the enterprise software world. And and I think one of the things I find really interesting about Filecoin and uh in this stack in general is that it it is like the value proposition isn't like immediately clear to it like a non-technology, like a not person without a software computer science background, right? It's not necessarily like, oh, that totally makes sense why I would need that, right? Uh, but to people that do come from these types of backgrounds, like people who are like a Web2 developer or people who have been involved in like building enterprise software or administrating enterprise software in some way, like these the, these problems that like we're solving in the, the Filecoin IPFS stack are things that are very like germane to the daily lives of these these individuals, right? But some random person on the street might not necessarily, like they might understand Bitcoin, okay, like, the, like a peer-to-peer -peer settlement, you know, money system, but like, a, you know, like, why would we need like content addressed, uh, you know, whatever, like these, these aren't the initial things that would like, you could like, just explain to somebody on the side of the street and they would, they would understand what it is. But, um, but it sounds like you guys kind of came from that sweet spot of people who are like, you're in kind of the web two software development world, but with an eye to the future. And then you really like grasped on to this uh, particular vision. You're like, whoa, like that, that, that's really, if this works, this is going to change everything. And you kind of dove in sort of head first there. Am I, am I describing that correctly? Definitely, definitely. And we also saw that like over time as I like we've been following IPFS and Falcon for a long time as they've been growing, it's become more and more of a competitive advantage as a developer mm. to implement that kind of stuff. And so we're starting to see teams building tools that are actually able to compete with giant web scale Web two traditional web, whatever you want to call it, companies. Um, I mean, right? We saw Filecoin go from zero to one percent of global cloud capacity in only a few years. And so, using these crypto economic incentives, and then as you mentioned, content addressing, using these new types of mechanisms, um, we're not we're like not playing fair, you know. We're I mean, sure, there's a lot of ups and downs. This is one big startup world, right? But um, at the end of the day, it's like this is the, this is the kind of stuff that helps us compete. Nice, nice. Um, well, let's talk about what you guys do kind of on your day to day, uh, gigs at, at Leto, uh, which is the company that, uh, you guys have founded, but what, what's that all about? Logan, you want to take that first? No, uh, I'll hand this one to Alex actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so Leto, long story short, it's a privacy focused observability platform for developers. And so what we focus on is like, you have this super resilient and fairly private peer-to-peer -peer web that is proliferating. And there's a lot of developers and companies that need some tooling to monitor some stuff that's going on. And so we realized, so for example, we started out by doing some really simple web analytics for websites and NFTs. We found a lot of developers were using Google analytics and we thought to ourselves, like for, for one thing, um, that doesn't work too well with IPFS data. And there's a couple of reasons why we can get into that, but also we're rebuilding the web, right? So we shouldn't be implementing the things that were causing the problems of the traditional web, we shouldn't be re-implementing those things and we should be re-architecting them um, with the same kind of philosophy and the same kind of uh, mechanisms. And so, yeah, so our, our platform, we collect some very non-invasive uh, data on what's happening on your IPFS data. So it could be a website, it could be a social app. Um, we started working with hosting providers um, who are like hosting lots of IPFS data on behalf of other developers. Um, and we started helping them understand um, when there's malicious content being hosted on their system. So malware has become a problem that a lot of these companies face. They'll just get a, a really scary takedown email one day from either the government or from some angry customer. And so we're helping them automate that. Um, but our main focus has been to not collect personally identifiable information. And so mm. we, we did a lot of research and we talked to a lot of people, including people in the in that Falcon world. And we came to understand that you don't need to collect tons and tons of data on 
individuals and like build up this stockpile of personal identifiable information in order to like do what we're trying to do here, which is understand what's going on on my system, improve my system, fix bottlenecks, and then protect against liability like malware or phishing websites being hosted, you know, on my platform. So that's, that's like in a nutshell, we can obviously get into it, but that's kind of the, the summary. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. That's super interesting. And that's, it, it seems like very like fundamental infrastructure to, um, you know, basically onboarding more people into using IPFS and using these protocols, right. Is like, you've, you've got to be able to have, I mean, obviously you need to be able to like measure various components of, you know, traffic and, and usage and all these types of things. And, um, and then obviously, you know, you know, this is open source software, right? So people can, you know, bad people can put like bad stuff. They can use these things for bad purposes. We all, you know, we all live in, I mean, we're in crypto, right? We sort of, <laughs> we all understand that intuitively, right? And that creates lots of bad publicity. That is, you know, a, you know, a small percentage of people create like this enormous problem that we all have to deal with. Um, and m maybe give a few more, um, like, with that, maybe without like naming any like you know specific clients or anything, but like w maybe give a couple of just kind of quick like maybe like case studies of what what a what a uh, you know a prototypical customer like might might look like that would that would use this. Yeah, so you have you have like a hosting platform. Logan, I'll let you jump into, but you have like a hosting platform that hosts 1.5 million IPFS objects, right? These are NFTs, these are web pages, these are like tons of different you know types of content. Um, and so, how do you go through 1.5 million objects while you're also producing new data every single day? Like your customers are producing new data on your platform. How do you automate the ability to monitor where whether malware is being hosted on that system? And right now, there's there's no tools to do that. And so, we do, we have an automated system that will basically send you a report. And we're working on ways to programmatically um, help people's systems know what our reports are saying without having to do some manual changes. And so uh, we're really all about being the developer's best friend and helping helping really uh, protect yourself um, right. while without collecting tons of personal data. Right. Right. Like Alex said, too, um, there's a lot of people who want to use IPFS. There's a lot of like really big development companies who idealistically want to like start using more decentralized architecture, but they need a lot of they need a lot of tooling to help them do that. Um, if you're operating server systems in different um, in different um, countries, different um, government regulations really apply to how you control that data. And so um, if somebody wants to, if there's a big company who wants to use IPFS, a lot of times the tooling just available in the ecosystem, since we're so new, um, it's harder for them. So they either have to build something for themselves or um, find find another developer that has done it already. And so it's really it's really exciting to to just help the people who want to use it do important things like taking, you know, dangerous data off of uh, the network. Yeah. And we're seeing lots of hosting providers pop up. It's been amazing to mm. see like not just hosting individual static files, but then now creating whole front ends right on IPFS. And, and then eventually we're getting to back ends too. That's coming really soon. So we are all about like better together. That's something that I think Juan Bennett and the whole ecosystem has really like pushed it's, it's, you know, better together. And so Logan's talking about helping companies use this stuff. It's like, well, we've got these awesome hosting providers, right? And so we're like, okay, well, we're friends with a lot of them. Why don't we go help them with some automated tooling to make their lives easier? Sometimes they actually sell our tooling ahead to their customers. Um, but at the end of the day, be better together, you know, we're, we're uh, trying to rebuild the web. And so that, that doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen with just one team. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I feel like from, from your vantage point, you got you both probably see have or have kind of like a front row seat to who is actually maybe exploring using IPFS or who's at least maybe like kicking the tires um, if they're not like you know fully using it but they're at least like hey we should be paying attention to this but then I, I would imagine you get a lot of cases like what you were mentioning Logan where there's people that are like hey we should probably explore this but maybe you know the tooling isn't like quite up to snuff or there you know we don't have quite the same analytics or, or, or sort of safety precautions or risk management, you know, whatever, um, that as you would with like a web two system, more established system. But I, I would assume that from your guys' vantage point, you guys are seeing a lot of, you know, who's actually interested in this kind of behind the scenes or just exploring the concept. Um, and hoping you can maybe give us a bit of, uh, of color on, you know, who are some interesting, I mean, I guess, you know, some name a specific names, I suppose, but like, who are some like interesting types of actors that, that, that are exploring this, that, that, might might be a surprise to some people or, or, or might not be some a name you'd, you'd initially think of. Right. So 
definitely um there's a whole purview around like web3 and open web architecture and stuff and so a lot of times when Alex and I have been building in the ecosystem, the tools we use and the tools we tell people about will um, often get a lot of attention. And so like how Alex and I will like push stuff into production and stuff is very like somewhat important um, because we're trying to move over to open web architecture. So on the same line is that who, who is interesting, uh, who, who's coming into the space um, looking at this, I think one of like our biggest surprises would be like the big Web two companies who really have a, a grasp of the ecosystem. Players like Cloudflare and Amazon Web uh, AWS, Amazon um, Web Services, they have put a lot of I don't know if a lot of resources, but they have put resources into um, put, using IPFS. I know Cloudflare has a lot of IPFS gateway technology that you can use off the shelf. And Amazon even has ways that you can now spool up gateways using their infrastructure. Um, so, you know, very, you would never expect those big Web2 companies to to kind of cross over into the dark side. And so um, I'm like very excited about that. There's also new, new players on the block. I think I'm very, I'm most excited about them. Um, just whenever you're doing something, uh, especially as a developer, sometimes you look at it and you're like, is there an easier way to do this? And I think the more we switch over into the IPFS Filecoin technology, the more it just happens to make sense, even though it can be a little difficult getting, you know, all the, everything, you know, working. But um, I think that's probably the most exciting, seeing the big and the small players join the party. Yeah. Yeah. And our, actually at our Austin Orbit group, you know, we host like a developer meetup here in Austin. Um, we can talk more about it, but it's been really amazing to see a most, like we have a Web3 crowd that comes, um, a lot of startups, a lot of companies, but then we also have like a mass major Web2 crowd that comes. We've kind of become a hub, one of the hubs, at least in Austin for that. And it's been really cool to see, like, we'll just be talking to a typical React, you know, front end developer. And he's like, hey, I just like this stuff. I see the value in it my company could use some of this stuff and I just need like a really easy API to just add into my stack. So it's kind of a vague answer to your question, but we're just, we're seeing just traditional developers who just build at, it could be like a big tech company like Logan's talking about. We also have people who are in real estate finance. We have people who are in um, e-commerce. Like it's, it's amazing. It's we're starting because the tooling is starting to get to a point where you can actually use it in your stack and not have to be like an expert on web three. Um, we're starting to see the early innings of like just companies from all over who have just like these software needs. Um, they're, they're coming to our events and they're asking like, Hey, what tools are available and, um, you know, working on prototypes and stuff. So, um, it really feels like we're moving from kind of like the early startup stage to really like starting to get to web scale. And, um, we're seeing the market respond to that. Yeah, it's very cool once you get to the point where the, the flywheel effect is starting to, uh, you know, occur in real time, perhaps. Uh, and, and I feel like the, the superpower that IPFS has is that even if you don't like, even if you're not a technologist or you're not a developer, like when people explain it to you, kind of, it's just like, wow, like this just intuitively makes a lot more sense than like the current system, right? Um, even if it is like, okay, like maybe it's a little harder to use right now because we don't have like all the tooling, but like if you were to pick one, you know, one side or the, or one way or the other for like constructing, you know, a content addressing system, whether it's going to be localization based or like it, it's going to be, you know, in the, you know, like go to this server in like North of Finland and like retrieve this data, or if it's going to be, you know, I like, it's going to be kind of like a, a digital you know fingerprint of each, you know, so the, the, the content is basically identified based on what it is versus where it is. It's like, well, yeah, like that's kind of a no brainer. I know which one I would pick. Right. So I feel like that's like this, like once you explain it to people, it's, it's like really easy to understand like why this would be useful. Right. Uh, and then the hurdle is just like, like you're mentioning, it's just, okay. Like getting the tooling up to snuff where you don't have to be like a really kind of, you know, hardcore person to be able to actually implement it. Um, yeah. and there's a lot and of use the other, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and I was just gonna say like, and the other thing too, I, I which I, which I find, which I, I think is kind of funny is like there, you know, there's, there's this sort of like there's this conception that to be like web three, quote unquote, you have to have a blockchain and you have to have a token, but it's like, well, I would argue like IPFS is maybe like the most like web three thing out there. If you just take web three, like the ideology of kind of decentralizing the internet and all this kind of stuff, uh, or making it more open and, and sort of, uh, you know, like unbundling it from like what the web two monopolies and like IPFS is probably the most web three thing out there, but it doesn't involve a blockchain or a token. 
Um, but maybe that's a debate above my pay grade, but it's, it's just kind of a funny like contrast. Like you don't necessarily need all this stuff to be like web three, you know? Well, that's what's so exciting. I think about all this stuff, like there's a spectrum of use cases, right? So there's certain use cases that need to be like censorship resistant, uh, against like a nation state. Right. And if for that, we have IPFS for that, we have Filecoin, we have like FVM, right. You can create smart contracts now that, um, to do programmatic stuff that no one can really mess with. Right. And then there's on the flip side of that, you can implement IPFS in simple ways, like hosting it on Amazon or something like Logan was talking about, um, which is also super useful. Right. And so that's the thing that's exciting for us too, is there's a lot of awesome web three use cases that have really taken off. And now we're starting to see sort of like this hybrid world where certain web three and web two mechanisms are coming together, um, to do what you're saying, just solving problems for developers, solving problems for companies, safer, faster, cheaper. And so, um, Logan and I are excited to be in the middle of that because we're seeing that wave growing. Yeah. Very cool. I, very cool. I think like, just to add, I think the, the, the most exciting thing about IPFS especially is it really like, even if you are a big, um, big company running a large system for a uh, hundred thousand users, just the fact that if your system is using IPFS, that system is a lot more built for the people using it than the people running it. And so I think that's like really like one of the most exciting things is like we're seeing a lot more control going into the hands of the people who are using, um, you know, this data. <laughs> no, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. I haven't, I haven't actually thought about that before, but that's an interesting distinction where it's like, it kind of makes sense intuitively, right? Like the people are going to build it, are going to build it in the way that like, you know, makes it like, I want to build it in the way that's easy for me to use. Right. But you're not, you know, you're not like necessarily thinking of like, okay, is the end, how is the end user going to be, uh, you know, reacting to this or is this, this, is this like the uh, most ideal, am I going to sacrifice? Like, you know, am I going to go through some pain myself to make like the end users, you know, experience a little bit better. Um, that's an interesting way to think about it. Um, maybe let's, let's shift gears here and talk a bit about what you guys are doing in the, the orbit community. Uh, and so orbit for, for those of you who don't know is, is like the Filecoin uh, ambassador, uh, community program that we've got up and running. And, um, I mean, this isn't really like a, a novel concept, perhaps like most chains have these types of, uh, uh kind of ambassador, uh, type programs, community programs. And really the idea is that look like in web three, we are a, you know, where we, we embrace decentralization. We, we embrace, uh, communities, we source open, embrace open source. And the idea is that anybody who's interested can just kind of plug in and start building, right? That's the whole kind of ethos. And um, and I think the idea is that it's like, look, we're not, you know, we're, we're, it's like a swarm of bees versus just like one, like, you know, we're, like who would you, who would you take in a fight? Like a swarm of drone aircraft or like one, you know, like death star, you know, like who, like who's, who's going to win that battle. Right. And I think like that, like ultimately like the drone aircraft, like army is going to be much more effective than just like the one massive mothership. So that's kind of the idea that we embrace in web three. Um, and, um, and, and so we've in Filecoin land here, we've got a, this, this community program called orbit, which is basically empowering, uh, local folks in the communities who are, who are building an ecosystem to get involved with like hosting events and producing content and all these kind of things. And, um, but maybe, um, Alex, you want to just maybe tee up like what you guys have been kind of doing in the orbit program based in Austin there and like what you guys have been building there. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like, like you said, it's all about community, right? And so these, like the peer, the strength of peer to peer networks is that we, we can bring everyone together digitally, but then also we've got this whole group of people locally who want to get together too. And so, um, yeah, so we've been actually hosting a, a monthly event for the last year. It's been super fun. We've kind of become a hub for like a bunch of startups, students, um, enthusiasts, you know, companies come to, to, to talk with us. And so, um, we really focus on, for one thing, just being a place for people to come and share ideas. Like we think that's super important. Definitely Filecoin Orbit has, has motivated that as like one of the big reasons is to bring the ecosystem together, share ideas, work together. Um, the main kind of theme that we focus on is usability. So like I said, you know, we have like people from like, we go to these developer meetups for like React developers, for example, and we invite them to come and we say, Hey, like come learn about how to use just these, some of these modern tools in your system to just make your system better or to make your system more performant or to make it cheaper or whatever the, the use case is. So we do a lot of demos of like Filecoin tools, ecosystem company tools, um, just like simple API, simple tools that you can just implement in your system. 
Um, so that's been super fun. And we've been seeing a lot of, a lot of startups come out of the woodwork, you know, once you kind of start doing these kinds of things, it's really cool to see more and more teams come and, and help and, um, a lot of regulars coming now. And so, yeah, we, um, we're also like super excited to collaborate. There's orbit across the world, right? So there's orbit in Asia and India and Europe, South America. And so, um, it's an opportunity to kind of bridge, bridge cultures, bridge, you know, continents. Um, as you said, there's like content, right? So we produce a lot of content, they produce a lot of content and then we share it. They present at their event, we present at our event. So yeah, it's really become like a force for building community in the space. And a lot of the ecosystem companies that are, are really gravitated towards it because it's a great place to uh, consistently come together. Well, it provides kind of an easy touch point for, for folks who are either like, you know, kind of both sides of the fence, right? Fol- folks who are looking to, for like an easy way to enter into the ecosystem or just want to learn more about what this is. And then you have companies in the ecosystem who are maybe like, okay, how do we kind of expand our network a little bit? How do we kind of get new folks into the funnel? Um, whether that be, you know, on the kind of the business development front or whether that be just on just general community building or, or just kind of on the marketing side, um, it presents an easy way to just to, um, you know, it's an easy touch point to get like just new kind of exposed. I mean, at the end of the day, we're kind of evangelists to these ideas, right? So it's like, this provides like an easy setting to get to evangelize. And then as the, the community grows and the network effect grows, like we, the, you know, the whole, uh, you know, the whole sort of, uh, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats, I suppose you could say. Um, but like Logan, I mean, just to kick it over to you, like what's been the most uh, kind of rewarding part about, uh, you know, doing the orbit stuff in Austin that you guys have built up over last year? Right. So I think like the biggest surprise to me was, like Alex said, we'll spend a lot of time in just a UI, just at UI, um, UI uh, presentations here in Austin. In here in Texas, uh, Austin particularly, there's a lot of developer communities just surrounding um, the city. So there's so many events that we go to. I think the greatest thing, the most exciting thing for for me um, is like you said, we, we evangelize like everything, um, you know, Falcoin IPFS, this is how we can kind of improve, um, just the overall internet. Um, the, the coolest thing is we can talk to any developer, any, any, um, front end dev, back end dev, and they really understand the mission from a very, from an early point. And I find that that's just really like amazing. Filecoin and IPFS encompass so much, it's the pinnacle of like, I think just technology. Um, and so if, if you're like, we'll have people who work in aerospace and satellites, they'll come and it'll just be an hour of just talking. And it's like, what, I mean, that's so incredible. So I think that's, what's most exciting is just the connection to everything that, you know, by performing these types of, these types of functions, it's just so, it's just so much better. (laughs) Well, and, and that, what I think is super interesting about what you guys have been have built here is that it's like it sounds like the people that are coming to your events uh, or your meetups are not just like you know Web three like NFT bros, right? It's like you're getting like like Web two people that work in like aerospace and people that work in you know uh, other types of like high tech, like people that maybe don't even think aren't even interested in crypto, right? Uh, or Web three as we whatever we want to call it. Uh, but these are just interested in technology, and they're like, wow, like this this seems like something I should be paying attention to. Um, and that's something that like kind of going back to like the superpower, I guess, of, of, of IPFS Filecoin, which is like, when you explain it to people, it's like, oh yeah, that, that totally makes sense why we would need something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe just talk a bit about more about like the, like the diversity of folks you've been able to, to, to like bring in just based on, uh, you know, as, as this network effect has grown. Yeah. Well, one thing that we've noticed, and I think a lot of people talk about this is there's, only a small, there's a small list of things that people in you know, web three and then like the traditional web can kind of agree on. And one of those things is IPFS. Like, so like Logan said, you know, it really resonates with developers from aerospace, developers from Google, developers from AI startups, uh, real estate finance companies. Like we, we really are seeing like a broad range and they come in with really specific questions. They're like, okay, I understand how this stack works. I want to implement it in my system. So where can I do that? What's the right use case? What about encryption? What about resist? Uh, like literally we had an event yesterday uh, here in Austin, our monthly event. And we were, I was talking with um, a product management background uh, developer and he was like, okay, what about CDN? What about uh, encryption? What about like, like he's thinking through, he's like piecing together 
the stack in his mind of like how he can actually implement this in his company. And, um, and so, yeah, I would say like, so sometimes it's just like a normal developer from the team. Sometimes it's like a CTO. Sometimes it's like, like we have a bunch of like CEOs who come. And so it's really a broad range. Um, and we're seeing, I would say from our first event a year ago, over a year ago to today, the scope of the questions and the people that are coming, it just continues to accelerate. It's amazing. And so like a year ago, people weren't saying like, oh, I know about this already. How do like, I have very specific questions about the stack, but they were like, what is this? Now it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to implement this. I already implemented this. How do I like tailor it? And we, like yesterday, we basically spent the whole time hacking on uh, FVM, like Falcon virtual machine. And so we're really starting to get into the nitty gritty of implementations versus just talking about, oh, this is beautiful. This is great. This is the future. So that, that's, I think the most exciting thing is seeing that tangible rubber hitting the road. That's very cool. That's very cool. And, and it's, it's great to see that, that like the interest has involved, right? Like evolved from just like, what the heck is this thing? to like, oh, like how, how can I actually deploy this in my stack? Right? Like that's, that's super cool. Um, and then um, we've got in a couple of days here, we've got coming up a big event in Denver that you guys are uh, hosting. You guys have put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this. But it's like I was looking at the agenda there. I'm like, dang, man, these guys like are hitting a home run just like left and right. Like, tell us about this. What are we doing here in Denver? Yeah. So, so, so go ahead, Logan. Uh, yeah, I'll hit this one. So, um, yeah, it's we're super like I like we said, uh, we're super um, happy to be to be assisted by Filecoin Foundation. Um since we do um, these these events so often here in Austin, it becomes second nature to just want to do them in other big cities as well. And so, um, being connected in the ecosystem for so many for so long, it's really easy to just hit up all of your buddies and say, "Hey, you wanna you know you wanna come to our event?" And so, um, yeah, we've got like you know anybody who wants to know like how do I get into this ecosystem or how you know how do I emulate things going on. Um, Feel for, like you have to come to our events. There's going to be um, there's going to be CEOs from pretty much all aspects of the ecosystem. So we're talking um, AI analytics, um, file storage, just everything. And so um, really, just like the best place to be, we have um, Molly McKinley's going to come and talk about the future of Filecoin. Which um, if you're if you're into IPC. And FEM stuff, this is like the go-to for you. Um, but really, we just want to make it available for everybody, make it super easy. And it should be a very pause. I mean, it's a very positive environment. And so I feel like Alex and I really just want to like push, push that and to push actual doing, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I, I was promoting the event earlier today on LinkedIn. I, I just made a little joke. I'm like, this is the speaker lineup is like, it's like the 96 Chicago Bulls right here. So it's uh, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I jumped the shark a little bit without that reference. But it's like, you got no. like Michael Jordan, Stagati Pippen, Steve Kerr. You know, maybe I'm even dating myself with that reference. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're throwing know, a home run for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but anyway, but maybe I'll go. It's like, it's like the, you know, the 2016 Gold State Warriors. Or, I don't know. Maybe I need to update yeah. my references for these. Yeah. Guys. I mean, our, our anyway. whole, like our whole plan in the very beginning before we got this awesome lineup was to just like be a place within all the noise of Denver, right? There's going to be, I don't know, 10,000, maybe 20,000 people, right? So just a place where everyone can come together and, and share and collaborate, right? Same kind of thing as what we do here in Austin. That was the initial plan. And then, yeah, we started seeing all, like a lot of ecosystem companies who were interested in presenting. They were coming to town. So like Logan said, I mean, we got decentralized databases, um, just Filecoin storage. We've got Huddle coming to talk about their just you know DRTC network. Um, of course, Molly coming to talk about the future of Filecoin. So um, and of course, we had to end it with a happy hour. And so we'll have plenty of time to learn, share, and then you know hang out together and um, have some time to talk. Awesome, awesome. No, I'm excited for this. This is gonna be really good. And then maybe just final question here. Um, you know, uh, is, you know, what, what advice might you have for anyone who's maybe thinking of becoming uh, an Orbit ambassador, like joining the Filecoin Orbit program? Uh, any, any like uh, thoughts or any wisdom you'd want to impart into them? Just start. <laughs> That's what I wish someone told me a long time ago. Just start. You know, even if you're busy with 10 other things, just start and don't stop. 1% every day. By the end of the year, you won't even recognize yourself, you know? So, um, yeah, it's 
the people that we actually really, really love it when people from outside of Web3 come to our events and they join the Orbit program because they actually understand the problems of their industry and they actually understand, oh, like I can implement this here. Whereas like I don't know the problems of aerospace engineering or like right like or whatever talking about satellites with with someone at our orbit event like he's the one who knows the actual problems and we can talk to him about some of the solutions but he's the one who's actually going to be implementing it so i would say if you can if you're if you have if you're working in some industry like don't feel fomo to say oh i need to like jump a ship and go work in this and like bring your knowledge that you have and your connections and, and your whole understanding bring that we need that and and then we'll do this hybrid thing of it's not just web through web two. It's just web. Nice. I love that. I love the way you put that there where it's, it's, it's like, yeah, like, like, yeah, you've been working in aerospace. You have an intimate knowledge of, of the problems that, that, that are faced in these particular tech stacks. Um, you know, it's going to be more effective perhaps to not, don't just like bail on that job and move into web three, but like, how do you, how can you find a way to bring in some of these web three ideas into your existing and to solve these existing problems that you encounter on a day to day basis? That's a really cool way of thinking about it. Right. Um, so I mean, maybe to wrap up here, let's give you guys some final like chance to offer any final thoughts and then what's the best way to get in touch if, uh, folks like want to learn more uh, about what you're doing. Uh, Logan, you want to take that? Any final thoughts here? Sure. Yeah. Like final thoughts, like Alex said, you know, the, the answer is bridges. So it's up to us to, to build bridges, um, about, you know, about these worlds that we're in. And so, um, that's just what Alex and I do. It's what we try to do. Um, and, uh, if, you know, by all means, if you want to get into the ecosystem and you're thinking about it, like, you know, yesterday was the time you should have gotten into it. So, you know, just do it. And, um, if you, if you want to contact like any of us, um, Twitter, you know, you can contact me, uh, Zafod B one seven on Twitter. Um, GitHub, uh, is all always like a place where we always are. And so, um, we try to like build in the open and everything, even our orbit, um, all of our presentations and everything are all public on GitHub. Um, so, I mean, GitHub is the easiest way to contact us. I mean, on, on Twitter, you know, Filecoin foundation, go, go, uh, hit up, um, Alex, you know, what's, what's your Twitter handle, Alex? Uh, yeah, Alex underscore Moran. Um, and also, if you want to learn more about the Orbit program, we've got a website, uh, austinorbit.io. Uh, we've got like our schedule, our GitHub, everything Logan mentioned. Um, you can you know, kind of follow up and learn more about the program. Um, and then lado.gg is the website for our uh, observability platform. Very cool. Very cool. Well, hey, Alex, Logan, really appreciate you, you uh, taking time to be with us today and telling us about your work and your thanks for sharing your enthusiasm uh, for the ecosystem and then the technology. Very inspiring. Um, appreciate you coming on the show today. We'll see you in Denver and, uh, thanks to everyone, all of our guests out there for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks for what you do and what the team does on the D web podcast. We love you guys. Thank you. All right.